Now Google Sheets has depreciation functions built right into it so that you don't have to use long complicated formulas. There's four of them. There's straight line depreciation. There's three of them that are accelerated methods. You have some of the year's digits, which is SYD. You have declining balance and you have double declining balance. I'm going to show you a spreadsheet that illustrates each one of the four. We're going to walk through them and talk about how to use them, what the different inputs are, and how they relate to each other as far as how quickly they depreciate. I tried to make it as simple as possible. It's enough years so that we can see how the different methods act over the years. I put in a round number for the cost. Some of these functions want a salvage value. We'll see what happens when we play with that. In the life you can change if you want, all of these will adapt to it. This spreadsheet is available online. You can follow the link that you see on your screen right now, and you can copy it into your own folder and your own drive and use it however you want. So this particular asset that we chose, I just made it a nice round number. You get some money back when you sell it. So what we're saying is, look, all the costs associated with buying it totaled $36,000. That includes shipping, installation, get it, everything to get it in cert place and service. And then when I'm done with it, it's going to be worth $5,000. That's what I expect to receive when I sell it. So the first function that I'm going to show you is straight line. And what that's saying is I expect to use it up at about the same rate every year. At the end of the first year, it's going to be worth four-fifths of what it was to begin with. I'm going to press F2 and that's going to bring up the formula so you can see the straight line function takes cost, salvage value, and life into account. In the way that I built these functions, um, I don't have to retype them every time so they're looking in the cells up above. And as you look at the straight line one, there's no there's no input for period because it doesn't matter what the period is. It's always going to be the same. So this is just the cost for one fifth of it because it says the life is five years. This actually could be five months and it would be the same. Just be one fifth, one fifth, one fifth. So the straight line function would be relatively easily changed out with just arithmetic. But as you get into the accelerated methods, it's handy not to have to type it out. So next I'm going to go into declining balance. And you can see I built this formula so that it looks up the period from the left-hand column. So if you're doing this and you're doing it for a different period, make sure you still drag down the period on the left. So it's a similar construct otherwise, cost, salvage, life, and then the period. You can also add an additional input, which I didn't do in this example, which is a month, and you use that month field if you placed it in service, not on January 1st. So if you did it, use the beginning of the month convention, say you did it in March, just act like it's March 1st, this would be a 10, so it would do 10 out of 12 months. I'm going to go to a website that, of course, I find to be pretty helpful. That's going to show us a little bit more about how this function works and why you want to use it. All you have to do is take one look at these formulas and realize, oh, I'm just going to use the function. This is what declining balance is doing with the different inputs. You don't need to think about that. All you need to know is that it calculates depreciation faster at first, slower in the beginning. And when you compare it to some of these others, the rate is a little bit different. Choose which one makes most sense to you. Do keep in mind, though, for bookkeeping purposes, for whatever reason, the declining balance function isn't self-balancing. It doesn't really know that it's not rounded properly. So you'll always have to plug it at the end if you don't want any accumulated depreciation left on the asset. The double declining balance is actually a much simpler formula, as you can see here. And we'll go back to the spreadsheet. Double declining balance, like the name says, depreciates it even faster in the beginning and slower in the end. In this particular example, it's already done after year four. So year five is going to have a zero depreciation expense. So look at the formula for double declining balance. It's very similar to the inputs 
for declining balance. And one of the differences is the last input is called factor, and that's how you can change the speed of it. I left it out to make this example simple, but you can make it go faster or slower by changing that. I think the default is two. It's 14,400. If you go in here and change it to two, it's still 14,400. If you make it 2.5, it's 18,000. Now the ones below I didn't change, so it doesn't balance right now, to be careful. If I go back to sheetshelp.com, it shows the formula for sum of the year's digits. The sum of the year's function is down here. It's kind of tricky how it works. In my mind, I don't think it really matters that much. Just look at the pattern. If it's a pattern that you think represents how your asset wears out, go ahead and use it. Let's just play around with these functions a little bit. The salvage value, a lot of times you just may say, yeah, look, it's zero. When it's done with it, I don't care. I'm going to donate it. I'm going to recycle it, throw it away, make it zero. That's all well and good for straight line. Declining balance just doesn't like that. It doesn't calculate right. So if you're using declining balance, you need to have a salvage value. Something unexpected also happens in double declining balance. It doesn't come down to the right amount. So you can't, you have to have a salvage value in that as well. Some of the year's digits seems to work fine. So if I put a salvage value back in and I just put a smaller one in, still be careful. It looks like straight line declining balance in some of the year's digits works, but double declining balance doesn't. So let's put 5,000 back in there. These are all reasonably working. And let's just do something to see which ones are going faster or slower. For that, I'll do conditional formatting For that, I'm going to go to the color scale for conditional formatting, and I'm going to put kind of a heat map on it. The red's going to be the fastest, green's going to be the slowest. I'm going to take that formatting, and I'm going to apply it to the other cells. And this is easy to see. So straight line, it's always the same. It's always the same color. Double declining balance goes faster in the beginning and a lot slower at the end. The declining balance and the sum of the year's digits are in the middle. So hopefully that gives you a nice overview. You can see which one you might want to use and how to easily use it.